Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back as promised with our second part to Mr. Gary Kasparov. I won't keep you for waiting for long, Frederick. Let us keep on. The, we, we left the, the last uh, part by talking about the game Frogger and Hopper and how Gary used uh, or got the computers to educate uh, it in the youth centers in Russia. What was one of the uh, next stories you have on your mind about Gary? Oh, my goodness. There are so <laughs> many. Know. You know, we could go on forever. But, I mean, it's 40 years of friendship, and I accompanied, accompanied him all over the place. We, I went to so many tournaments and exhibitions and so on. But uh, let's start with uh, chess space. We developed mm -hmm. chess space with his encouragement. And then he came to Hamburg again to play against the Bundesliga team, which is very strong. They have grandmasters, eight players, you know, yeah. uh, and a clock symbol, which is just almost impossible. Oh. And he had played against them once. He came completely exhausted from Holland, and he played against them, and uh, he lost. The mm -hmm. only clock symbol or symbol he's ever lost. Mm -hmm. He lost four and a half to three and a half. And uh, he vowed revenge. And then a year <laughs> later, he came to Hamburg. And I had, uh, we had chess space. We had developed it. And I had it on a disc. And we I set the computer up in his hotel room. Mm -hmm. And um, we then I called the uh, organizers and I said, Okay, who are his opponents? And they dictated the names and who's playing black and who's playing white. And I said, here, Gary, here are the uh, opponents. And he said, wow, they're even stronger than the last <laughs> time. And I said, okay, now we prepare. And he said, okay, I'll go for a stroll in the hotel lobby. And when you're ready, you just call me. I said, I'm ready already. And he said, how? I mean, you just got the names. I said, <laughs> no, watch. And I put in the disc oh. and I had games, you know, hundreds and hundreds of games. And we looked them up and he started working. And he said, my God, you know what this would have meant 10 years ago? I would have three people working on it for a week or two. And they would come with lots of books with little pieces of paper in them. And then I could start studying my opponents, and he studied them in one and a half days on the computer, watching at approximately, he would do about, I don't know, 10 to 20 games. And, no, anyway, he did it at very high speed. Mm -hmm. I think he used about uh, a minute or less for each game. He just, and some of them in just seconds, oh. he'd see the moves and say, oh no, okay, this is, and then, <laughs> I got this. <laughs> uh, he prepared for them. And then I experienced something which nobody else has ever experienced. And this is, you know, we would, I went up on the stage and mm -hmm. there were all the players sitting there, eight of them. And I identified them. This is Murray Chandler and this is whatever. And uh, then there was music and Gary came on the stage. And then I led him to the players. And I said, this is, uh, you know, Grandmaster Chandler and this one. And I came to one and I said, this is Sön Kamaus. He's a very strong uh, young player. And Gary said, hi, and shook hands with him and went on mm -hmm. to the next. And Sön Kamaus was sitting there saying, he behaved as if he recognized me, but he doesn't know me. <laughs> I've never met him ever. Uh, something's wrong. You know, you raise your eyebrows or so high. But of course, what he didn't understand that Gary had met him and knew him extremely well. He's the guy who doesn't <laughs> like the Greenfeld, who panics under a uh, kingside attack and so on. He knew him. Perfectly. Show me and your game Gary, and I'll tell you who you are. <laughs> show me your games. He had seen yeah. hundreds, hundreds of games by him. And then he's, he played against all eight of them and won 
seven to one or something Jeez. like that, you know. He just wiped them off. <laughs> oh, and I have gosh. pictures of him sitting there drinking his coffee while all eight of them are thinking, thinking, thinking. And he's just looking around. Wow. And this was... And then we started playing against national teams. Mm -hmm. uh, we played against the French team, the Swiss team, the French again, and the German junior team, all kinds of teams. And I say we, because at some stage, Gary threatened me. He said, <laughs> if I lose the simultaneous <laughs> exhibition, I would be there with my computer and all the games and everything. If I lose this, it is your fault. <laughs> and I said, okay. But if you win, it is also my, I have part you're, of you're it. You're doing said, it. Okay, yeah, it's my doing. <laughs> I, I helped you. So we agreed, okay, it's us, we. And we played these ridiculous simultaneous exhibitions, clock symbols. We played against the German natural, national team, the Olympiad team, with Vlastimil Hort, who was who was a challenger strong. for the world yeah. championship and uh, Matthias Valls and so on. Eric Lobron was part of the team. There were four very, very strong grandmasters. Now, now do you remember roughly which time it was? It was early, in the late 80s, I assume? Yes, or, it, was, yeah. it was late 80s. It mm -hmm. was the second half of the 80s. I met him in 85. Yeah. And then soon we started doing this it was yeah, yeah. like a circus act <laughs> and let me tell you about the uh match against the simultaneous against the german national okay. team what happened was he spent almost a week preparing and typically he invited journalists to watch him preparing he said this is chess base and this is how i do it and so on so he helped us immensely <clears throat> And he spent all, almost a week preparing. We stayed in a hotel. And then came the day of the match. And he was in panic. And I said, uh, he said, this is, uh, I shouldn't have done this. <sighs> and I tried to encourage him. And he went and he started to play. And then during the game, it was very interesting. What happened was uh, he was playing against them. And... And then at some stage he would come to the to fetch himself coffee or whatever, mm -hmm. and he'd chat with me and he he said, "I'm thinking of offering him a draw." Uh, I think it was Hickel or someone, mm -hmm. and yeah, I said he won't accept because they have instructions to play on <laughs> whatever the position because they must occupy. And how did you know? Um, how did you know that you were you were just I, certain yeah i was certain <laughs> and i knew the german team captain and so oh, on. okay <clears throat> they will never accept it he said you sure i said yeah absolutely <laughs> so he went played a couple of moves and he offered him a draw and he accepted <laughs> <laughs> and then what happened was vastimil hot who had a fairly <laughs> Uh, well, a slightly difficult position. Mm -hmm. And he knew that 30 moves later, he's going to attack my B pawn or something like that. And Gary offered him a draw. And he said, yeah, fine. Okay, that's great. Wow. Now suddenly he was playing against two very strong grandmasters, Lobron and uh, Matthias Valls. Yeah. And he could concentrate. And they were sitting there saying, didn't we agree that... <laughs> <laughs> they should occupy his mind all the time. And he won one of the games, and so he won the Simul uh -huh. exhibition, which was truly massive, remarkable. He massive. played against then against the Israeli teams, the Argentinian teams, and so on. And yeah. it was just... How did, so. Can I ask quickly, um, how did you get uh, those events going was it because uh, kasparov was already that famous and he was offering yes. this to the teams and they just said yes. like yeah with pleasure we're, yes. we're on it well and, what happened was it was very popular and we had huge crowds and yeah and they uh, would yeah, stage yeah. it with music and it was like ramble or something nice and uh it was 
it was just very popular. So we kept doing this. Were there any, uh, besides the preparation and anything else, were there any rituals which uh, Gary and you had? Like you were always drinking a tea before or you always had a meal or you always took a walk or something like that? Or was it just from situation to situation differently? Well, what we dis one thing I discovered, not just for these simultaneous exhibitions, but also for his matches. I visited all his matches against <clears throat> against Karpov yeah. and then against Anand and so on and Kramnik. And we discovered that after three hours, he was slightly exhausted. Ah. And then I came up with the following me and his mother came up with the following solution. We feed him chocolate after three hours <laughs> and Toblerone chocolate. So uh, after three hours of play, he would go to his, you know, canteen area, uh, get himself a coffee and find Toblerone. There. And then he'd eat to the blood sugar, you know, get his blood sugar up. That is fantastic. And I want to. I want to see in the next tournaments people after three hours having their Toblerone <laughs> next to the chess table right now. Well, I don't know if it worked directly, but it it, it seemed to work, and he stuck to it. You know, he always. Cute. Fred, do you have my Toblerone? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get it. Don't worry. So, it became a ritual. Mm -hmm. There's one other thing I, I should mention, and this is not so uh, intensely described in my book, okay. is that. Of course, I helped him and I accompanied him and I experienced things which very few people have experienced. But there was one aspect which was I treasured immensely. This is, I had a lot of fun with him. Mm -hmm. He has a great sense of humor and uh, he's always interested in puzzles and jokes and so on. And so we just go on and on with this. I would present him with puzzles. Some of them are, by the way, in my book. There's a whole section. Yeah. And after I finished, I delivered it. I showed my chapter on Kasparov to him. And I said, please read it and tell me what I should take out. <laughs> because it's all very personal. And he read it and he said, well, you know, there was a mistake. It was not 1985. It was in... Uh, in January 1980. So he corrects a few dates. Yeah. And I said, that was it. Yeah, but what about the rest? <laughs> he said, yeah, no, no, that's okay. And I said, but I make fun of you. I tease you in it. And so he said, that's okay. You know, if you want to read about my career in chess, go to Wikipedia. <laughs> you are describing, you know, how we interacted and how. So he's, mm -hmm. he's very tolerant of that. But, you know, we did all, I did all, all kinds of pranks on him. Let me tell you one. Yes, but there please. are about 10 I could tell you, <laughs> or 20. But one prank was we were on a train and uh, from Switzerland to Germany. <clears throat> and it was long and hot. And uh, he, was, he suffers from one problem in life, boredom. He doesn't like not to be doing something constructive. So, so what are we going to do now? I said... Let me show you a card game. And he said, okay, card game. He likes card games. We, we know already like from the Karpov episode, Karpov, if you have exactly. uh, not listened to it yet or heard it or, or watched it yet. So I took a deck of cards and I made three, six, six or eight uh, little piles of mm -hmm. cards face down. And I said, now, each of us turns over one card and... Uh, the higher number wins. <laughs> if it is red and black, like a 10 of hearts or, or spades, then red is better than black. Mm -hmm. And diamonds is, uh, no, hearts is better than diamonds and spades are better than clubs. And he was taking notes and saying, okay, spades are better than clubs, not diamonds and so on. So we check who can get the highest number of tricks. And he said, yeah, but what about the rules? I said, I told you the rules. Mm -hmm. And he said, come on, this is just chance. <laughs> I said, no, I've been practicing it for years. I'm very, <laughs> very good at it. He said, come on, Fred. This, how can So I said, let's play. Okay. He, he turned over a card. It was a five. I turned over one. It was a seven. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was mine. And the person who loses can can start the next one. 
So he turned another one. It was a 10. I turned over one. It was a jack. And so I kept winning. And in the end, it was like 23 to 3 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> he was completely baffled. And he said, okay, wait, this is... This is not okay. What wizardry is this? He took the this? cards <laughs> and he he mixed them, shuffled and cut them and so on. And he made the six piles. And then we played again. And again, I was winning almost every uh, try. And he discussed it with his seconds and his helpers who were with us <laughs> in Russian. But I understood just one word. Uh, they said something about statistica. Mm -hmm. And he said, what the, what the hell? Can st statistics can't play a role in this. <laughs> how how can he be winning this? There's no way he can do it. Now, this was just, he's just a very innocent young boy mm -hmm. from Baku, Azerbaijan. And he didn't know how evil the world is. <laughs> these, these were marked cards. Yeah. yeah. And I was just reading the facts. They're very subtly marked cards. And so I had to tell him, and he, he was very upset. He was and, probably uh, furious, yeah. <laughs> and there were many jokes like this where he would sometimes not talk to me for an hour, you know, just upset about this, how I <laughs> tricked him and cheated him. But he also did it to me, you know. He'd prepare some kind of a, a puzzle or a joke mm -hmm. on Fred, mm -hmm. and then he'd pull it out. So <laughs> nice. it was... In general, just a lot of fun with him. Yeah. I was never, ever bored. It was just yeah, not just the chess, but also the human interaction. Yes. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. I mean, you've written even more uh, about it in your book. I know even more stories you have told us uh, when we were having a meal together or even Uh, on an occasion when you were visiting and um, yeah it's always it's it's so so nice to listen to those interactions you two have one and... last one yeah give it to us please yes okay uh, I was in 1996 I think I was in Philadelphia mm -hmm. he was playing against Deep Blue the first match oh yeah. which he won by the way and uh It was spectacular. And the ACM, which staged the match, had a PR lady named Terry Phoenix. Terry. Terry was a very beautiful, very spectacular young lady. And uh, she was controlling everything and making sure everything worked properly. And uh, one day, and there was a long swimming pool in the hotel we were staying. Mm -hmm. It was just very long. And... Gary would swim laps on in the swimming pool. So one day I said to him, I want to challenge you to swim. And he said, you, you, you've seen me swim. I'm very, very good. And I said, I still want to challenge you. He said, okay. And I said, but I won't swim. You have to. And he said, against whom? I said, Terry. He said, the spectacular, the beautiful... Uh, Young lady there, come on, Fred. And, uh, but he was smart enough to go to Terry and ask her, <laughs> are, you, are you a good swimmer, Terry? And she said, well, I was a backup for the United States Olympic team. <laughs> oh, wow. So I had a lot of blue marks on me. I got punched up by Gary. Of course, she was much, much better than him. <laughs> cute that's nice oh yeah it's it's uh it's really always a pleasure to listen to this everybody thank you so much for watching this concludes our gary kasparov episode we will see each other soon again though don't worry bye bye till now goodbye